Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a problem meeting rooms and you notice that the UI of this looks a little bit different and let me show you why. So if you go on leak code and you try to solve this problem meeting rooms, you'll notice that it's a locked problem and you have to subscribe and pay money to be able to solve this premium leak code problem. But there's actually a workaround that I found and that is that there's a site called Lint Code and on that site Lint Code you can basically solve its it's pretty much a leak code clone and you can basically solve premium leak code problems for free. So, you know, this is, so yeah, if you don't want to pay money to be able to solve certain problems on leak code, I'd recommend solving them on this site instead. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. But nevertheless, this is basically the exact same problem. I don't know how they can get away with doing that, but that's okay. So we're given an array of meeting time intervals consisting of start and end time. So each interval is basically a tuple or a pair of values. The first value is the start time. The second value is the end time of a particular meeting. So for example, if we were given two meetings, one starts at zero and ends at eight, and the next one starts at eight and ends at 10, these do not overlap. Basically, we're, we're trying to determine if a person could attend both of these meetings, and technically they could because it's one ends at eight and the other one starts at eight, so that's technically non-overlapping. And in this case, we would return true because the person could attend both of these meetings. But let's look at the second example. So we see that one meeting starts at zero and ends at 30. The next meeting that starts after, it starts at five. So technically it starts after this meeting, but it ends at 10. So the main thing to notice is this meeting starts before this meeting has even ended, right? So if this goes from zero all the way to 30, we see another meeting starts over here at five and it goes to 10, but the thing we're paying attention to is it started before the other meeting even ended, right? Like we can see that they are overlapping. Therefore, nobody could be able to attend both of the meetings at the same time. So we have to return false because we found overlapping intervals. So as you can tell, it might be helpful for us if we're able to sort all of the meetings based on the start time of each meeting. And they basically gave us that sorted array, you know, just as an input, but that, and they're basically hinting us to do exactly that sort it based on the start value of each interval. So if we, we are given an array of meeting intervals and we sort based on the start time, that is going to take n log n complexity for that sorting. But after we're done sorting, what you're going to notice is we're basically allowed to start at the beginning and just scan through. So the next part of the algorithm is going to be O of n. So the overall time complexity is just going to be big O n log n. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the first two intervals available to us. And the only thing we're going to compare is the end time of the first interval and the start time of the second interval because we know for sure since these are in sorted order this one is going to start before or equal to the same time as this one so we know for sure the start time of this is either going to be right here or it's going to come after it and for us to detect that these two intervals are overlapping it's very simple if the start time of this is before the end time of this one that means they are overlapping. So for example, if the start time of this was over here, that means it starts before this one ends. Therefore, they are overlapping and we can immediately return false, right? That means no one could attend all of the meetings. But if they're not overlapping, which is the case right now, right? This one starts right as this one ends. So that technically does not mean that they're overlapping. So that means these two intervals are not overlapping. So my next question to you is, does that mean now we have to compare this one to this one as well? We don't, and that's exactly why we sorted the input, because we know if this one, if this interval starting value came after or equal to this interval's end value, then there's no way that this interval could possibly overlap with this one, because we know for sure this interval start time is going to come after this interval start time right or equal to it so if this one did not overlap this one then there's no way this could possibly overlap this one so we don't have to check that so now as we move to the next position we're going to be checking if these two intervals are overlapping and so again we're just going to repeat that process okay the end time of this one and the start time of this one well this the start time of this is after this one 
after the end time of this interval, so therefore they're definitely not overlapping, right? And if this one does not overlap with this one, if we had a bunch of intervals that came after over here, right, even if they started at the exact same time, right, maybe some intervals like this, then if we can determine that this interval does not overlap this interval, then for sure, all of these intervals that could possibly exist towards the right are definitely not going to overlap with this one either. So then we just continue our comparisons, comparing each adjacent pair of intervals. So that is basically the solution. The main idea to notice is that we can sort the input based on the start time and that's going to give us the most efficient solution. So now let's jump into the code on lint code rather than leak code this time. So one thing before I start coding is I want to mention that the list of intervals is given to us not as a pair, but it's actually an object. So interval it happens to be an object. It has two members, start and end, and they basically mean what they say they mean. So now we can code it. So remember, the first thing we're going to want to do is sort the intervals, and we're going to sort it based on the start time. So in Python, we can give the key that we're going to be sorting on as this. It's going to be lambda, basically an inline function. So for this function, if we're given an input i for the interval, the return value, or rather what we're going to be sorting it based on is going to be i of start, right? So for an interval, we're going to be sorting it based on the start time of that interval. And once we're done with that, we're just going to iterate through the entire array of intervals. So uh, I'm going to use i for index. It's not the interval itself. And we're going to go through the length of intervals. And since we're comparing adjacent intervals, we can actually start at index 1 because we're going to compare index 1 with the previous index. So we're going to be looking at two intervals. Interval 1 is going to be the interval at index i minus 1. So that's going to be the first interval. Interval 2 is going to be the interval at the current index, so intervals at index i. And remember, we want to compare the end time of interval 1 and the start time of interval 2. And how are we comparing them? How do we know if we're going to be returning false? If and only if the start time of interval 2 is less than the end time of interval 1. That means interval 2 starts before interval 1 ends. And therefore, we would have to return false. If that's not the case, though, then we don't have to do anything, right? Then we just have to go to the next iteration of our loop and then compare the next two intervals. And if we never end up returning false, that means we never had overlapping intervals, then we can just return true as soon as we exit out of the loop. So now let me just submit it, make sure that it works. And yep, you can see it's about as efficient as we could get. So... Uh, probably the biggest thing that you learned in this is that you can use a website called Link Code to solve premium link code problems for free. And I think I'm probably going to be making use of this site when I'm solving some other premium questions such as Alien Dictionary and some other ones that I think are pretty important and good problems to practice. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.